Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm actually going to be walking you through some of the latest features in Unity and specifically the visual effects graph that Unity recently released. I've been playing a lot around with the actual graph and some of the people that I that actually sent the images to that I created using the particle effects were pretty impressed with what I created. So I posted that in Reddit, I posted it in Twitter and people really like what I created so I actually figured why not just you know do a video about the process and basically in this first video I want to focus on the essentials basically walk you through the tool how it works how you can generate some particles and then some of the other components that are available through the the actual editor and then on the next video I'm actually going to be walking you through some more advanced graph and some of the graph that I was able to generate by experimentation. So let's actually start with the basics and let's go into Unity. All right, guys, so I created a, a basic Unity project that I'm going to be actually providing to you via GitHub. So look for the GitHub URL in the description of this video. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to have you check window, click on window, package manager. And the uh, visual effects graph actually requires two components, the high definition render pipeline and also the visual effects graph itself. So what I did, I actually installed it ahead of time so that you didn't have to wait. So make sure that you install those two. So the high definition render pipeline and the visual effects graph. Once you're done, just close the window. You can see that it's going to show up under packages. So I have the visual effects graph and also the high definition render pipeline. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to right click on assets and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it visual effects. And inside of that folder, we're going to put everything that we're going to be creating for this video for the most part. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the visual effects area and then click on create rendering and we're going to be creating a high definition render pipeline asset and I'm just going to rename it to not have the word new and perfect so the next thing that I'll, that I'll have you do is click on the the button edit on the toolbar and then project settings and we're going to actually select the high definition render pipeline asset that we just created and this is a this error that we're getting is, is normal the the high definition render pipeline doesn't support gamma mode so to get rid of that let's actually go to file build settings player settings and we're going to go down to where it says rendering so other settings rendering and we're going to change this to linear it's going to take a little a little bit to set okay so looks like that's done and we're actually going to just clear the console i don't want to see that error and we're going to go back to our main camera. And I like to, to work on actually on a on much of a darker mode. So I'm going to actually have you go click on the camera and change the background to black. I really like how the particles look on a black background. So I'm going to have you set that to that. And, and now I think we're, we're pretty much set for the most part. Now what I'm going to have you do is click on window visual effects and let's click on the visual effects graph and I'm actually gonna it's it's gonna basically pull up a window just like any other window and you can actually snap it in any area in unity so I'm actually gonna put it on the side so that you can see everything so I'm gonna be displaying the particles on the left and basically or not base graph on the right so basically what we're seeing here when we're seeing here is we're seeing what we're going to be working on for the most part for this video, which is it's kind of like a, a node based editor where you're going to be able to basically add nodes and then remove nodes. And some of those nodes are going to be context based. So let's actually get something created so you can see how that works. So I'm going to actually right click on visual effects, create, and we're going to be actually creating a visual effects this time. So. I'm going to have you go into visual effects and then click on visual effects graph and we're going to call this one vfx1 vfx underscore one and that's really all we need to do for now and then let's go back into the hierarchy and I'm going to create a new game object so while you're in the hierarchy I'm going to right click on it and then create empty 
and this one we're just going to call it VFX1. It's going to basically hold the particle effects that we're going to be creating in a game object. And then down in the inspector, click on a component, and we're going to create a, a visual effect. We're actually not going to create a visual effect, but we're going to attach a visual effect component. And then we're going to associate the, com the effect that we already created. And that's basically it. OK, so now if we go back to the, so instead of looking at game view, let's actually go into scene view. And you can kind of see that we're starting to get some particles going. And if we go to the game, it doesn't really look really cool. It's just very basic. But that's really running the new visual effects graph and running the new particles. These particles are actually generating through the through the GPU as opposed to the CPU on the older particle system. So now what I'm going to do is, while you have the game object selected, I'm going to click on Edit. And that's actually going to bring the No Editor. And I'm actually going to toggle a couple of things. So by default, you're going to see these target effect game object. And this is really cool because you can actually stop the particles from generating. You know, you can hit play to regenerate them. You can change the the play rate if you want it to. So I'm going to go back to, let's actually go back to 100. And you have this option in here to actually either bring it back on or toggle it. So we're going to hide it. I don't want to see it for now. The other options that you also have is you have a compile and you have an auto compile. The, I actually leave it on auto compile because if I make changes in here, let's say that I change the, I change the max or let's say I change the, the capacity on how much, let's actually change the rate to let's say 1000 and let's change the capacity to 320. So that's actually auto compiling automatically for me. I don't have to hit the word, the option compile. So basically what you're seeing right here, it's the life cycle of the particle system. The This is the most basic setup that you'll see where you have a spawn that actually tells us what the rate is. So I set it to three to 1000 and then the capacity I set it to 320. Let's say that I set it to, let's actually increase it to 600. You're going to see that we're starting to get a lot more particles. You also have what is called an initialize. And anything that we are selecting in here is context based. So if I wanted to add something else to that block, I could right click and set in the basically on the bottom of it or on the top. And, and I could create an, another block. And these are basically context based. So they're going to apply to this component. The same thing with the update. If we wanted to apply you know, certain things to the update, we could actually right click on, on the area and then add some of these different components. So let's actually go down. So that's basically, so you have this pan where you, you can specify the rate of the particle. You also have the capacity. So if we wanted to have more, we can actually modify this value. You can also modify the size. So if I wanted to change the size of the, the box that you're seeing on the editor view, you can as well by changing these values. You can also change the center if you wanted to. The, the other cool thing that Unity provided was is actually these handles. So I could actually make changes to the bounds in they happen, you know, I do them in the scene view and they're actually getting modified in the node. So I can actually modify it there. I can increment it if I wanted to. And these are, and then you, you also can set the velocity. So if you wanted the velocity to go, you know, to the left, I could modify the velocity to basically do that. And if I wanted to do, maybe let's change it to be, you know, I wanted to go up. Like if, if there were bubbles, and if we go to the game view, kind of see what's happening. So I'm actually going to undo what I did. And you also have the undo functionality, just like everything else in Unity. So all right, so we have the initialize, the spawn, the initialize, and you also have an update. And inside of the update, you could do some other things, like if you wanted to create a new block, like I was saying, you can also handle collisions. So you can add a collider if you wanted to collide the particles. Or you can do, if I go back, you can also change the position. If I want it to be you know, a circle, you can kind of see that it's starting to create 
So that's actually creating a circle kind of a view, and you can kind of see that the handles are really hard to see. So let me actually lower the amount of particles that I have. So let's say let's change this to 100, and let's change the rate to let's say 200. Okay, perfect. Let's go back into our position. So if you select the node, the position node that I was that I just created. You kind of see that we're also getting some handles. So you can modify the handles for that circle. If you want this to be more of a circular particle system, then you can use that position. There's also other ones that are available. So if I delete it, you can also delete it by holding Command Delete on a Mac. And I believe it's something similar in Windows. So let's actually right click on it and create block. And let's go into position one more time. And so they also have, you know, you can do a circle, you can do a cone, you can do a line if you wanted to do a line. So you can kind of see that the particles are now getting generated in a line. So you can also modify the line. So if I wanted to start the line, let's say on two for Y, so you can kind of see that the line is even rendered in Unity, which is really, really great. Perfect. So I'm actually going to delete this. Gonna leave the default. Let's actually go back into or perfect. And let's actually go down to some of the other options. So the quad output. And in this area, this is basically you can actually change the color, you can change the texture that is applied to the particles. So if I wanted to be, you know, use the default particle texture, then I could use that. You can also change the you know the blame mode if you want it to be addictive or you know mask or opaque so I've been playing quite a bit with some of these settings so you're welcome to play with those settings as well so I'm gonna go back in undo undo and let's leave the default particle system the the other thing that is really really cool is you can also change the the orientation so if you wanted to say okay I want a velocity and you can kind of see how how the particles are changing. You, you also have some other options that are available there. The the size over time is really helpful. You also get a you also get a curve. So if I want the particles to start at zero and then increment, you could do that, or you can actually change it to be, you know, more of a curvature. I could also start big and actually go small. So if we go back here and we go to game view, kind of see what's what's getting created. I'm actually going to go back down to from a small to a large size. So something something like that. Perfect. And you also have some sample modes. So if you want to change it by the speed, say that I want to change the speed of X. And kind of see how everything is reacting to the changes that I do. Cool. Then the colors, so the colors are the particles. So if I wanted to add, let's say I change the color here to say red, and then when it ends, I want it to be more of a maybe a green color, something like that works. And looks like I lost my, let's actually add that one there. Let's go back into my red. There we go. So we're going from a red to to a green. And if I go back to my particles, so I can change, I can select some of these, or I could do this kind of looks like a smoke system. And I could do more of a chest. If I change the the size, so if I go back down and looks looks like and if we go back up and let's change the rate to say K1 20,000 on the rate, and I want the capacity to be 20,000 as well. And you can see that we're generating a lot of particles. So if I go back here, and if I make some changes, let's actually make a few more changes, change the lifetime and randomness. Let's go into the size. And do something like that and so a lot of these things require a lot of tweaking I've been I've been playing a lot around with some of the settings 
So let's go back to, let's actually go to the update and create a block. And in the block, I'm actually going to do a different position. So let's do a sphere. So we can kind of see how the sphere, and right now the, the arc of the sphere is really, really large. If we go back down, actually go into scene, scene view, and let's go, there we go. Let's go back into game view, and if I go back down to the size, so you can kind of see more. And if I go back down to here, let's actually change this color to be more of a white. And let's say that we have a little bit of a, of a yellow. And we can actually change the size just a little bit more. We can kind of see more of a noise. So we have 20,000 particles getting generated. So if we wanted to create, if we wanted to span more, let's say that we wanted to do to 200,000 and also the capacity is going to be 200,000. We have a lot of particles gener getting generated on the screen and kind of see and you can also see the the actual sphere that I that I created for the for the shape of the particles. It's actually showing in the in the inside. And you can play with some of these settings. So so the other things that I wanted to show you in this video is I'm actually going to delete everything that we just created. And I want to show you some of the presets that are available. So if I go, if I right click on, on the, basically the, the gray area, create node, you also have different, different nodes options that are available. So you have what is called a system. And we have an empty particle system. We have a simple particle system, a, sim a static mesh, and also a simple swarm particle system, which is the one that I'm going to be creating in just a minute. So I actually want to, let's actually recompile. Looks like it doesn't get regenerated until I add another node. So what I'm gonna, go, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to system and then see simple swarm system. And you're gonna see that it generates a system for you that you can actually go in and tweak. And if we go into the game view, you can see that by, by default, it's creating an amazing, an amazing effect and we can also go in and make some changes I've actually been playing a lot with some of these settings so if you wanted to change the arc you can kind of see how that is getting effect affected by it you can also change the center we can bring it up we can bring it down we could also change the radius so if I change the radius and maybe we can do something like that and we can see a line I can move it down like if it's falling so it creates an, an amazing system for you. And you can always start from, you know, from, from the basics and start with a basic system and start looking at how this one is configured and then basically go from there. So that's really what I wanted to show you in this video. If you guys have any questions about, you know, anything that I just mentioned in the video and, you know, to be honest, I, I barely started using the system and I'm really, really impressed with the capabilities of it. You, you, you'll be amazed of what kind of, you know, effect. You'll be amazed with what kind of effects you get by just playing with some of these settings. So on the next video, I'm going to show you some of the effects that I created that are really, really cool. And it actually didn't take that long to get them created. So let's actually go into the next video and I'll show you some of that. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you, guys.